Hey, it's AU5. Today I'm not going to do a tutorial, but I want to talk about spectrum analyzers, particularly spectrograms. Spectrograms are visual representations of the audio in a two-dimensional graph that has time in one axis and frequency in the other axis. This is an essential tool for music production and sound analysis. As a sound designer, I use this all the time to analyze the fine details of what it is I'm specifically doing. It's basically like I am sculpting audio with a visual aid. Many of you have asked, what is this thing in the bottom corner of my screen? This is a spectrogram. Specifically, this one is Image Lines Wave Candy. And if I play a sound, you can see it. You can see that the x-axis is representing time as it is scrolling, and the y-axis is representing frequency as I am changing the cutoff frequency of this filter in Serum and adjust the resonance. I can literally see where the cutoff frequency is, where the resonance is, and all of the harmonics in this waveform. <laughs> As you can see, this is an incredibly useful tool in sound analysis, sound design, mixing, etc. Not all spectrograms are made equally. The reason that I use Image Lines Wave Candy, aside from the fact that it's really convenient to just move around, it always stays on top, I can fit it inside of the little help box, it has enhanced frequency. Now, I want to show you what the majority of other spectrum analyzers look like. Here's Insight by Isotope. And if I play a note, cool. You can see that there are your harmonics. If I adjust the cutoff here, you can see that the low pass filter is allowing only the lows to pass at the different cutoff points. You can see the resonant peak. But the problem lies when we start to get into the lower bass frequencies. Also, I want to note that by default, this thing is in a 3D view and it also uses the Mel scale. So it's usually going to look like this. But if you right click and change the frequency scale to something like flat log, you can get all the way down to 30 hertz and theoretically below. Now, as we get lower and lower, you know, it looks like it's blown out right now. Even if I turn this down, I'm not able to tell what frequency that is. If I use a sine wave, no filter. These high frequencies here, I can see that as a higher frequency much better than I can see this as a low frequency. Like this could literally be anywhere between zero hertz and like 80 hertz right here. So how to change that is usually by changing the FFT size. So the FFT algorithm is what is used to analyze the incoming audio, basically it cuts it up into chunks or windows, which are determined by the FFT size. I have 512 all the way up to 8K. And 512 is every 512 audio samples, it will create a slice and analyze that window of 512 samples. It will analyze it and determine what frequency content is inside that little slice and then it will print it as a vertical stripe on the spectrum and it does that in sequence and so we get a constant stream of visual information. So 512 is a pretty small FFT size. If I play a note. The actual frequency resolution isn't too good. If I bring this to 8192, this is a much larger window size. It has more time to analyze the frequency content. So if I play the same note, I get a much better resolution, frequency-wise at least. 512, terrible resolution. 8K, much better resolution. However, the trade-off is time resolution. If I have something like this, It's struggling on the x-axis, which is time. The time resolution is much lower than if I did a small FFT size, like 512. You can see that the x-axis resolution is much sharper now, but at the expense of the y-axis frequency resolution, 
uh, is much lower. You can try to find like a nice middle ground that works for your audio source. Obviously, if you're doing something that is percussive, something like drums, where you are more concerned about time resolution, then yeah, use a small FFT size. If you're analyzing something that is tonal and concerned about frequency resolution, increase your FFT size. This is just the nature of it. It is kind of like the uncertainty principle. The higher frequency resolution you get, you get less time resolution and vice versa. I'm literally just saying this over and over just to ingrain how codependent these aspects are. I'm not satisfied with that. And I don't think I'm the only one. I do a lot of sound design, particularly bass design with like really low frequencies, like sub frequencies. I'll do stuff like this where, you know, this is like a very fast moving low sub. This is really not helpful. This spectrum right here is really not helpful. Here's another one by Noisia. I can get a little bit more uh, control by changing like the map curve and the um, decibel range and the frequency range and the FFT size, but like still, this is really hard to determine what frequency this is actually like moving and sweeping at. Like I could change this LFO and do some crazy stuff. And it gives me like a, a the gist. It gives me the gist of what's going on. This note right here could be anywhere between like 40 hertz and 90 hertz. If I increase the resolution to even 8K, you know, this could be anywhere between 45 hertz to 70 hertz. I'm not satisfied with that. Image Lines Wave Candy is an analyzer that I use because it has enhanced frequency. So with that, with that off, I can play a note. And uh, yeah, this looks just like pretty much every other spectrogram. If I enable enhanced frequency, all of a sudden, I am getting a very, very sharp line. And if I hover my mouse over it, I can see this is 100 hertz. I can bring this all the way down to like super low. This is 30 hertz. And this is only using a 1024 window size. Here, let me re-enable this LFO. That is a pretty sharp spectrum in my opinion. I'm getting good frequency resolution and I'm getting good time resolution. Now, it's really frustrating because I feel like this should be a standard. There is mini meters by Direct, which due to my request of this, he has actually implemented an enhanced frequency algorithm. So this is what it looks like by default, but if you set the mode to sharp, check that out. You get a much more enhanced, much sharper frequency resolution. Now this is fixed at, I believe, a 2K window size. So it's time resolution still is not as great as if it was a 1K window size, like uh, like Wave Candy. I mean, 1024 bands is really, for me, the sweet spot. I can see so much information temporally and harmonically, and I really have no complaints. I have this series of kick drums here, and I can see, especially the second one, I can see the pitch envelope of this really well. Like I can see that this kick drum goes all the way down to about 46 hertz. Let me use Insight. That's useless. Vision 4X. The same deal, it's incomparable. And something that really frustrates me is the fact that it actually says, Vision 4X's powerful spectrogram provides enhanced low end resolution, offering access to more information about the frequencies of your mix. Enhanced low end resolution. That is not enhanced low end resolution, I'm sorry. What I'm seeing in mini meters and wave candy, that's enhanced low end resolution. So why aren't other DSP companies that are producing spectrum analyzers introducing enhanced frequency? I was thinking about it, maybe this isn't something that a lot of people know about, but I wanna bring awareness to the fact that there is a way to do this and it's called the spectrum reassignment method. 
And there are articles and papers on this and how to do this. It explains how to get better resolution by utilizing the phase spectrum. Here's just a Wikipedia article that talks about how to utilize phase data from the phase spectrum to enhance the resolution of the frequency readout. I'm going to put links to these articles and papers in the description of this video. If anyone who who is a software developer doing spectrum analysis tools. This is something that I highly recommend checking out and implementing because, I mean, for instance, Vision 4X looks awesome. The reason I don't use it is because it has this low resolution, this non-enhanced spectrum. Like, it's got all this other awesome stuff. I, I really like this, but unfortunately, the spectrum bothers me so much. And this is the reason that I don't use anything else except Wave Candy on Windows and Mini Meters on Mac. Mini Meters is Mac and Windows. Wave Candy is also discontinued and it's Windows exclusive. Basically, the only way that you can really get this is if you got a license for the ImageLine Juice Pack and are able to download a, a legacy or an archived version of this. But yeah, you can't use it on Mac unless you are using FL Studio. In FL Studio, it is something that is built in. But the thing is, I I don't like restricting a plugin among many of their other plugins, such as Harmer, just to funnel people into using the DAW. That feels like it's infringing on my freedom as someone who uses software and technology. Like clearly it's able to be done. It's not something that is very accessible, uh, definitely not for Mac users. And really, I'd say the best thing that we got that compares to that is mini meters. Hopefully that there is an option that gets added soon that allows you to change the FFT analysis size so we can get better time resolution in the spectrum as well. And just for fun, here are a bunch of different sounds that are being played through all of the spectrograms side by side. <laughs> This video is already much longer than I anticipated it to be, but I want to say at the bottom of the Wikipedia article, it says that <clears throat> the auditory nerves may use a form of the reassignment method to process sounds. These nerves are known for preserving timing, phase information, better than they do for magnitudes. The authors come up with a variation of reassignment with complex values and show that it produces sparse outputs like auditory nerves do. By running this reassignment with windows of different bandwidths, a consensus that captures multiple kinds of signals is found, again like the auditory system. They argue that the algorithm is simple enough for neurons to implement. What this means to me is that our ears are already picking up on more detail than what the normal FFT analysis algorithm can display. And by using this spectrum reassignment method, by using the phase data to enhance the frequency and timing resolution, we can get closer to what we're actually perceiving. And in my opinion, this is really an essential thing to strive for as music producers and just people that are working with audio because if we can have a better understanding of what it is that we're hearing by having a visual representation of it that closer matches our perception, then I think we can have a deeper intuition. We can gain a deeper insight to how audio really works and just become better sound designers and music producers and musicians. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you know anyone who you think could benefit from this video, please share it with them. I would love to see more implementation of this algorithm and this reassignment spectrum method in DSP tools in the future. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>
Oh, my God.